Hello and welcome to the show. This is Everything Under the Sun. My name is Ty. I hope all of you have been doing really well. I know it's been some time since I've last podcasted. A lot's been going on. It's been it's been a it's been a crazy year. 2023 was a crazy year. It was a start of I think a very transformative experience altogether. And this may be the situation for many of you where just last year it, it could have been it could have been something that seemed very tumultuous for you or something that seemed really great even, or the the start of something really good. I think that when we entered 2023, there was a lot of desire for great things to happen because it was the end of like the COVID mandates and people felt like things were kind of getting back to normal. Kids were going back to school. People were able to start finding more jobs and and things were just kind of starting to flow a little bit better. And I think that it created a sense of optimism for the year. And for me, that optimism was definitely something that lasted throughout the year, but it didn't keep things from happening throughout the year. Experiences that may not have been as pleasant as many of us would have expected. I spoke to many of you about all the health issues that were happening um, at the beginning of the year with the cancer diagnosis at the beginning of the year and things just kind of unfolding with all of that and and how you know now I'm, I'm in the clear with that, but that was something that was very transformative as far as my thoughts and conceptions about life and and how long I was going to be in this life, in this world. And, and it made me appreciate the moments that I did have here. And then a few months later, many of you may have heard about the fires that happened in Lahaina in, in Maui, Hawaii. And that was something that I was impacted by as well. My home was in Lahaina. I actually had a studio in Lahaina as well. And even the last episode, I, it was kind of interesting because I listened to the last episode maybe a few months back, and that was when I was intending on actually starting the episodes back again. But, you know, just life started coming in, and, and I wanted to make sure I came back fully myself. I wanted to come back fully recognizing that I've processed the experiences that I've gone through, and I'm ready to move forward with with just what life has to bring and what life has to offer, most importantly. But the episode before this episode was a few months ago, and it was actually like four days before the actual fire happened. And I mentioned in the episode about building something and creating something and asking yourself if all of it came crumbling down, will you allow that to be something that dictates your experience or your steps moving forward? And listening to this after the fire, which did burn down my house, my car, my all my belongings, things that I've held on to since childhood, things that you know, are irreplaceable, seeing all that stuff literally burn down and crumble down. It was something that was very, very impactful. It was something that caused a deep pain with myself. I felt very lost. I felt unsure about where I was going, what I was doing. I was even unsure if I was still alive. You know, it's like there's sometimes traumatic experiences make you feel like it's so surreal that you don't even feel like you're, you know, in real life. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure if any of you experienced that, but I'm sure we have different moments in our lives where something like that happens and, and we find ourselves kind of questioning whether or not that, uh, you know, existence and all that sort of stuff. But so that's kind of what I was going through in that time. And it was something that I don't think I was ready to hear the words that I had spoken in that episode or that podcast. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to hear that. Like, will I allow this to let me crumble? Will I allow this to let me freeze in my place? Will I allow it to stop me from moving towards something that I feel passionate about. And those weren't questions I was ready to ask myself after this devastating event. I was just focused on healing. I was focused on trying to be okay, trying to process what was happening. And and that's what all this time has been. It's really been me getting back to myself. And although it hasn't taken all this time for me to fully process all of that, I think it's taken this time to really not only process it, but feel confident in everything that has happened, feel like I'm integrated with the information that's kind of come through with these experiences. And, and I think that's something that's so important is, is as we go through this life, there are going to be experiences that come up. And I kind of mentioned maybe 2023 was something that was inspirational or tumultuous for you. But either way, when we can look back at an experience, whether it's a joyful experience or a very painful experience, and we can gain information from that, we can realize something that we 
desire more. We can realize something that that is a strength within us more. And and these are things that don't always seem apparent to us when we're just living our normal lives. It's it's when we come across experiences that are heightened in some kind of way, whether it's a heightened in a very joyful way or heightened in a non-pleasant way. These experiences jolt us out of our normal routine and they get us to think about something different. You find yourself meeting some you know, eccentric person with a bunch of money and you find yourself doing things like being on a yacht or something like that. And, and you find a new desire within yourself to realize that, you know, I, I'm capable of having this. I'm capable of enjoying myself in this way. This is something that I feel that I'm, I'm fully able to do. Maybe there's someone who owns a business that's taking you under their wing and teaching you some things and you realize, you know, I can have my own business too. There are things that happen to us and they're, they're very pleasant things that happen to us, very joyful things that we get to experience in this life, but they also come with takeaway points, things that we can take away from them and learn to intertwine them within our lives and, and build something greater. So I know I'm, it seems like I'm kind of going all over the place with this, but the idea is that we all go through th- these experiences and it doesn't mean that your house has to burn down for you to come to the understanding that you want to appreciate life, you want to live life more, you want to enjoy the people and the situations that 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 come into your experience a lot more. But when you do have those experiences, they can be something that's so profound and they can help you to move into a better place in your life that you want to be. So this fire, it was um, it's something that many people are still healing from. I'm sure some of you have heard it on the news when it was happening and now there's so many other things happening in the world that that kind of keep us in this heightened sense of feeling within ourselves and the biggest thing that i kind of want to speak about in this episode i know that we're we're almost you know 10 minutes into this already but the biggest thing i want to speak about is throughout this entire time of healing and, and going through this journey of any journey that we have in our life any situation that we have in our life it's something that i've heard time and time again before I even got into, you know, spirituality or, or thinking about things in deeper ways, it's this idea of breathing. People always say like breathe or count to 10 and do these different things. And I never really, I guess, logically, I can see the, the value in it, but I don't think I ever put it into practice. And it wasn't until the fire happened that I did start putting it into practice. And it wasn't even something I consciously put into practice. It was just something that, that happened because everything was happening too fast. There were, there were so many moving parts. This fire for many people, it, it radically just changed everything. It, it, it uprooted everything and just kind of like made it a toss up. And in that toss up, I didn't know what direction I was supposed to be going in. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't know if I was supposed to be trying to enjoy my life or if I was supposed to cry. You know, it was, there was a lot of just confusion that's happening and, and many people are still very much in that situation. But for me, when, when it got to that point where I didn't even know how to think straight, I had to stop thinking and I focused on breathing. And there were so many times that just focusing on breathing helped me to, to just be okay in that moment. And I didn't realize that breathing in that way because you're not you're not breathing in a way you're not trying to think in a way you're just breathing through it the thoughts are going to keep flowing until they stop flowing but we can just focus on breathing and then they'll just slowly dissipate and it's not like we're hiding them or sheltering them away it's just like breathing allows us to move the emotion through us and again that's something that i've heard many times but i didn't really understand it until i was actually practicing it and even when I was practicing it, I didn't realize I was practicing it until months after. And and when I realized that I'd gone through all this healing, mostly by breathing, I wasn't thinking about things. I wasn't trying to think about things. I, I couldn't think straight. So the only thing I could do was breathe. And I find myself doing it more and more just uh, like I, I spoke in this podcast about traffic and how that's something that aggravates me. And, and sometimes when, when uh, people in front of me aren't driving the right way or maybe they're driving too slow or something it it kind of like brings tension within my body even this is something that i've just started breathing through and i find that when i breathe through it not only do i feel better but the situation clears itself and whether it clears itself because the person in front of me is no longer distracting me the person in front of me is no longer aggravating me because maybe some good music came on or maybe they just moved out of my way 
But either way, as we kind of bring ourselves to a place of being okay, and it's not necessarily thinking ourselves okay or feeling that we're okay, but just breathing and, and knowing that the focus isn't on us not being okay. Because many times when we feel uncomfortable, when we feel dis-ease, it's because we're focusing on something that feels unpleasant. That's, that's it's always what happens. We're focusing on something that feels unpleasant. So when we allow ourselves to breathe and, and just not think about something, you're more at ease, you're more at peace. And it's something that you only recognize in hindsight when you go back to those thoughts again, you're like, wait a minute, where was I a few minutes ago? Like I, I felt that I let go of this and now I'm bringing this all back on. But the point of all of it is that the breathing in itself is an easy way that allows us to not only process pain and move emotion, but it allows us to feel more okay in our lives in this moment right now, because this is where our life is. This is where we are living life. We're living life right now, not in the past. I, I, I can't live in the day of that fire because I would be living in trauma. And I did live that way for uh, like a month and a half, two months afterwards. Every time I smelled smoke, it was like an alarm that, that just kind of set off in my head. Every time I saw the sunset, even the sunset, you know, sometimes it has that, that fiery look to it that kind of like, like the sky is burning in a way. Um, even that was triggering for me. And it was something that I just had to breathe through. It was something I had to allow myself to feel, but not focus on the pain of it. And that's how we heal. We allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling, but not judge it, not, not focus on the pain of it, not, not poke the wound more. The wound is already there. You can acknowledge it being there without putting your finger in it, without pressing more pain on it, without focusing your attention and staring at that wound and waiting for it to heal. We just breathe and we allow ourselves to be however we need to be in that moment. And yeah, there were times after the fire that I cried. There were actually one of the main times was because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. So I just started crying. And it came out of nowhere. It was, it was the most random, <laughs> the random moment. I was actually at a restaurant with my mom and my niece and uh, I had to excuse myself. I went to the bathroom and I just started like sobbing. And, <laughs> and then like seven minutes later, I had to like get out of the bathroom because someone knocked on the door. And I'd excuse myself to the car where I continued to just weep. And, you know, that is something that is very important for us to do, to feel what we're feeling, but not to judge what we're feeling. And then when we're ready to feel something different, when we're ready to move out of that place, because it does feel like a place where we feel stuck in, when we're ready to move out of that place, we don't have to do anything that's like too extreme or too uncomfortable. All we have to do is breathe. All we have to do is recognize this is something that is, is, it's bothering me a lot. This is something that's coming up an emotion, a feeling, a situation, a memory. It's coming up and I don't even know how to process it really. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow it to be exactly where it is. And I'm just going to breathe. I'm going to take deep breaths. And I'm just going to breathe. And I'm going to try to stop thinking about, I'm going to stop trying to press that wound some more. I'm going to stop trying to look at it and wait for it to heal. I'm going to trust that it's, it's healing on its own. It's doing its healing. And the only thing I have to do is breathe. And it may not seem like we're being proactive when we just do that breathing. And trust me, I just thought I was breathing. I just thought I was like trying to be okay in that moment. So I didn't start crying again. And then lo and behold, like four months later, I, I feel okay. I feel good. I feel gratitude. I'm looking back at situations and moments where I was incredibly blessed even after the fire with, with good friends and good fortune that that, that came to me out of it that I was unable to see for months because I was just so, I was in a different place and it was okay. I don't judge myself for being in that place. Being in that place was necessary. But when it was time for me to realize within myself the desire to move somewhere else, to be somewhere else, to feel something different, that's when it was very intentional. I'm just going to breathe through this. I'm going to I'm going to allow this to be, and I'm just going to breathe, and I'm going to, I'm going to be exactly as I am right now. And I know it seems like maybe I'm speaking in circles right now, but it's, it's something that I feel is so profound that it has to be repeated and reiterated. Because again, I was told this many times in my life to breathe and count to 10 and do these different things, and I didn't hear it. And maybe you won't hear it either. And, and that's okay. It's not something that like I'm saying you need to hear, but 
it's something that has a value beyond what I can, where I can speak in words, something that we have to experience within ourselves, something that we have to experience through the practice of it. And in that experience, then we start to trust it more. We start to trust ourselves more to be able to breathe, to know when we need to breathe. Because even in those moments of feeling anxiety or feeling tension or feeling fear, it's almost like you're holding your breath. There's a tightness in your chest. There's a there's an anxiety that's building up. You're, you're starting to sweat. You're starting to hyperventilate. You feel like you can't breathe. There's There are these symptoms of not breathing. The breath is literally impacted when we are not at ease. So when we can control our breath and we can consciously breathe and just breathe through or calm ourselves down, like catch that breath that we feel like we need to catch and just focus on the breath, then the other things will move as well. And it will move in such a natural way, just like all things are very natural. You don't look at a plant growing and, and see it just shoot up. I mean, maybe you may shoot, see it shoot up out of the ground from one day to the next, but after that, it's almost like a, a gradual change. And it's so gradual that you don't even notice when it's finally a, a flower. It's finally bloomed into what it was meant to grow into. The progress happens so gradually, so naturally that it, it almost seems effortless. The same thing that happens when we try to change our body in some kind of way, maybe we're working out, we don't see the changes that are made, but there's someone that maybe you haven't seen in a few months and like, whoa, have you been working out? Maybe we're trying to grow our hair to a certain length and you don't really notice it, but again, you haven't seen someone in a few weeks and they're like, wow, your hair is getting longer. There are things that we don't notice because we're seeing it every single day, but that's just the, the gradual movement of all things natural. And being a natural part of this experience, the emotions that we have will gradually move to a better place as long as we allow them to move there. But many times we get stuck in that memory and that thought and that pain, and we don't allow ourselves to move. We don't allow that breath to come. We stay in that, that tight breath, that tight chest, that anxiety feeling, and we don't allow ourselves to move past it. Sometimes we don't know how. This is a way how, just breathing through and not judging yourself by saying, this doesn't seem like I'm doing anything. I don't feel like there's any change that's happening. This needs to happen faster. I need to be okay sooner. There's no timeline in, in the process of moving towards our happiness or moving towards our joy or moving towards peace. There's no timeline for that. Like I said, there are people that are maybe still very much weeping the experience of the fire. We all process these things very, very differently. And that's okay. And it's important to value yourself in that recognition. But when you are ready to move in some way, allow yourself to breathe through it. Don't think your way through it. You will not think your way to peace. There's no way to think your way to peace. <laughs> it, it's, it's impossible because the thinking mind is active and it's not at peace. It's, it's, it's constantly moving. That is not peace. Peace is the breath, the silent mind. And it's not something that we have to acquire overnight. It's not something that we have to instantly do and jolt ourselves into to be doing the right thing for ourselves. The right thing is what you feel you need to do for yourself. But I just noticed within my experience that the breath was something so profound. And again, I've heard it time and time again about this, the breath being something that is so helpful in the situations. And it wasn't until I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know anything else except for to breathe. That was the only thing I felt that I had control over. And in that breathing, I found myself feeling more at peace. I found myself feeling more at ease. I found myself able to enjoy laughter and things that I used to enjoy before. I can watch the sunset and not feel the trauma of the night of the fire. I can be by a bonfire with friends and laughing and enjoying myself and not have memories of the smoke and the flames. There's so many things that we feel as though they kind of slip away from us when a traumatic situation happens or a breakup or some kind of heartache or pain. We feel as though part of us kind of is, is moved away, is slipped away, is gone. But as we allow ourselves to heal and breathe and not judge ourselves for where we are, we find those things slowly coming back into our lives and maybe they look different. Maybe they feel a little bit different. But you recognize it as being what was always there before. Maybe now you feel a greater strength. Maybe now you're holding a greater understanding because of what has happened. 
We allow ourselves a breath and it, it not only brings us to peace, but it allows integration. And integration is the most important thing because all these situations in life can happen. Life can happen, but if we're not integrating it, then, then we're not doing anything really. And we integrate naturally. We always integrate naturally. All of it is very natural, but there's resistance that keeps us from going with that natural flow of growth and movement and momentum. The breath allows that momentum to start back up. It allows us to stop looking at that wound and to start just allowing healing to be the natural state, which it is. So allow yourself a gift of breath because it is a gift. And when you give yourself that gift, you know that you are deserving of that gift. And you are deserving of that gift. So again, that's all I have for this episode. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or anything that you'd like to share, you can send that to everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com. You can join any of the social media groups, Instagram, everything.sunpodcast, Twitter, at every sun Podcast, the Facebook group, at every sun Podcast, and the YouTube page, everything under the sun Podcast. And yeah, that's all I got. I love you all so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.